you know, we're in a sport which is very uh, – people setting programs. It's very much long, you know, looking at long-term goals. All right. Well, today's guest is nothing short of a testament to the sheer force of human will and endurance. Hailing from the beautiful and rugged landscape of Western Australia, he's a powerhouse in the world of Ironman triathlon, demonstrating time and again that true grit comes from overcoming tremendous setbacks. Fresh off a monumental win at Ironman Asia Pacific Championships in Cairns, a victory all the more heroic considering he nearly lost his foot to a severe infection earlier this year. With two Ironman championships to his name, including a home victory at Ironman Western Australia and a journey marked by both formidable challenges and spectacular triumphs, his story, it's a beacon of perseverance and strength. So without further ado, welcome and thanks for joining me on The Greg Bennett Show, Matt Burton. How are you, mate? Well, with an introduction like that, I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, I had to hit record quickly here. You've just jumped on, and uh, mainly because I said, how's your week been? And you, you said, oh, for the first time in my life, I feel like I might need a manager. <laughs> Mate, it's, uh, it's been a good week? Yeah, it's oh, it's it's still sink- it's probably sinking in now. I've been home for a few days. Mm. And, um, you know, you get back around family who – people that have been there mm. before the journey started, right? And then they, they went through that early – I guess the early years where it was how long are you going to do this for? And, mm. um, you know, I started as an age grouper, so it wasn't, I was just doing it for enjoyment as a 21 year old, really. Um, and like a lot of people, you catch a bug and, and, and now I'm here. But yeah, the last weeks when you achieve something, you, you dream, but then, you know, I mean, you, you, you listen to a lot of people talk about they had a dream and they were able to achieve it and they didn't come from anything around that and oh, i believe that now mm-hmm. i yeah i haven't come from triathlon i never did anything in this of the sort at school or i struggled for any endur- endurance uh running i was just more of a, a bigger body which you know i still am now in the sport but it's um aussie rules footy was was about as much as i ran because you don't do a lot of running in cricket right and, uh, <laughs> unless you're a great batsman <laughs> uh, unless you're really good and you love running between wickets uh, yeah oh yeah, mate well the- massive congrats honestly yes. it's um you know when I've, I've looked through you know the years and believe it or not you and i actually did race way back in we did 2014 oh, this is a cool story yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. put you away. That was my first ever win. Yeah, it was. Actually. It yeah. was in Philippines, uh, <laughs> yeah. 2014. You were, I think you were, it was the probably the dodgiest course. Oh, wasn't imaginable. it? Oh, wow. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there was no. They were just. I was just following a motorbike through yeah. the jungle. We were running. Yeah, I didn't even have a course laid out. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I think the whole thing. I don't even know if we all ran the right courses or what. We just ended up at at the finish. Oh, you won. Okay, yeah, good well job. Done. No, that was awesome, mate. But I did, look. I just want to. I want to start this show, and we can reflect a little bit back on your journey in a moment. Moment, but you know just a testament like i said in the int- introduction it's like this this perseverance to keep at it and keep at it mm. um and i've got to say nobody has ever been more requested to come on this show <laughs> mm, maybe lionel sanders he, he maybe okay. peeped you a little bit and he refuses to come on for whatever reason but in one week uh, your your victory i think it it impacted a. It impacted the triathlon community, definitely in Australia here, and maybe even globally, because I think they saw a guy that he's been there or thereabouts. And yes, you had your win in in WA mm. uh, Ironman right right out of um, COVID lockdown in twenty twenty one. Yeah, but this one, mate, it propelled you onto the world yeah. scene. And I think there's almost like a. I think there's all these guys in their twenties because you're mid thirties, and they're yeah. like, huh. you've given a, you, you've inspired a generation, I think, mate, to go. Mm. If you hang in there. Great things are possible. And like you said, you had a dream. It's just awesome, buddy. I just massive congrats. It gives me goosebumps to think about. Uh, has the body recovered since you got home? Yeah, I actually did. Uh, had a run session this morning and was moving really well. So, mm. I mean, without sounding like, you know, I wasn't, I, I felt very in control last week. I just had an extremely enjoyable day. I, yeah, I yeah. guess with the, with the setback early this year, when I come back training, when you and you know this very well, you have ten weeks off. You start from zero, so I was starting from complete base level. Mm. I'd also been on antibiotics for ten weeks, so I was wow. ten kilos heavier. 
um, you know, I just, my body was just a ball of information. So it was such a, um, an experience every day. It mm. was, uh, it was, you know, mornings I was like, how am I going to get through this one this day? But, you know, I've been fortunate to work with uh, a coach for the last or 12 months now. And it, our mantra very much became about one day at a time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and without that, you know, we're in a sport which is very, uh, people setting programs. It's very much long, you know, looking at long-term goals and week by week and where's the key session. And But there was no such thing. It was just if I accumulate some load, my body will remember where, you know, in December I went 7.40. So it's, you know, the quickest time recorded by an Aussie over the iron distance. Um, you, your body doesn't forget that. Mm-hmm. So, but then, yeah, when you, I guess that that setback was was almost the end for me. You know, I've got a young family. So um, I'm, I, I credit the fact that I was able to achieve what I did last weekend in Cairns to my wife, my mum and my dad, um, my mother-in-law, my, my sisters, without the close family support, you know, I've got a, some very close friends who have been there through from the beginning. Um, you know, I live in an area in Perth where there's no triathlon. So we just, it was foreign to everybody, right? Mm. And um, yeah, they just weathered me through. I had years of, of back issues. Um, I actually... You know, recently, not long ago, discovered that I actually have an autoimmune disease, which is what an arthritic disease issue that was the cause of a lot of that. Um, but, you know, I had a, a broken sacrum that was misdiagnosed for years and just little things that um, everybody has a journey, right? Everyone's mm-hmm. on, on a journey in life and, mm-hmm. and and there's always something, especially when you're going to push your body into that up, upper threshold of 35 to 40 hours a week in a sport that is so consuming mentally physically you know it's um and that's the enjoy me that's a this sport's a life it's a lifestyle it's not a you know you watch i guess the ball sports and the mainstream sports in australia the guys that everyone the males and females they're paid very well and they they probably take it for granted a little bit mm-hmm. um but it's also you know they're it comes with those mainstream sports also comes a lot of media and a lot of attention, whereas we don't tend to have that so much. So when this opportunity comes where I put myself in a winning position and, you know, what follows is this amazing amount of support from people at home who have seen the journey, you know, followed triathlon in WA, seen it for 15 years Mm -hmm. to, you know, and people I've met along the time to now some, some global support from peers. When you get respect from Mm -hmm. other guys that you race, I guess that's for me. That's I'm not looking for this to be an influencer. I just want to be respected for the fact that I love doing, I love training, mm. and in order to live a life of training, you have to be able to perform in a race. Mm-hmm. It's just taken me 15 years. <laughs> hey, well, uh, you, you touched on a really good point there, and I think um, I'm, I'm nodding my head to everything you've just said, and so many quotable quotes there. By the way, I love it. Um, but when you get that respect from your peers, yeah. you know, was there any was there any that sort of jumped out at you or like, oh, that's pretty cool. So and so wrote um, me or Yeah, Worthy. I, yeah. I like I've got a lot of time for how his his approach. It's very Worthy's a real he's an interesting one where you know, he came from cycling, rowing, he's put himself in triathlon. His approach to it, and people miss this, he's a guy that's having fun. Like, mm-hmm. okay, there's moments where he'd be like, Oh, what am I doing? But when you start to enjoy yourself and don't know, you don't overthink then as soon as someone's having fun and you look at like mm. Pogacar and, you know, and Vanderpoel and, and the likes in the cycling world, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of the sport. Mm. A lot of the time on the camera, they're having fun. Yeah. So it's like, if you're getting guys smiling, that's when, you know, things start to happen in, in a good sense because everybody, regardless, right. You still go through challenging times. It's, mm. you know, if my, if it's not my foot, it's your, your elbow's hurting or it's just the nature of, of life and <laughs> and what you go through. But when you can weather that, and, and this is how I felt last Sunday, little things were going wrong, but I almost was enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, just how do you how do you correct this? You know, I come out of transition putting my suit on and my, my zip popped. And it's straight away I was like, oh, okay, now I need to, we need to um, change the zip. You're right, but I, I had to stand still and, you know, I've come out with a group and I had to let them all go and, and fix it. And 
but that's you know little things like that i would have once got quite frustrated with but i just i'm looking back at the day and i was like yeah i dropped a bottle and had some nutrition and just nothing was like i'll just move on quickly Mm, get yeah, yourself in neutral fast and pretty yeah, yeah. that's the difference right it's yeah like just enjoy enjoy that process you know it's no it's doesn't doesn't have to go perfect because what is that mm-hmm. you know it's like yeah I, you go looking for that for so long and i i've had yeah it definitely wasn't enjoyable for six weeks coming off 10 weeks off and <laughs> being, being in hospital but it started to click about four weeks ago and yeah, I just – you keep a lid on it and I've got some really cool heads at home and people that support me and, I mean, it's it's more for those. I've had, you know, a massage therapist, a physio that's been part of the whole journey and it's um, it's special for everyone. It's yeah. not just me. It's just been amazing the amount of support that's come in and, and people, you know, it's – yes, it's not easy with a having a child and and leaving home all the time, just training so, so much, but when you have an amazing wife that – is backing, you know, <laughs> he's like, yeah, let's go live with my my mum again so, you know, you can pick yourself up and go again. It's We're all in it together. Mate, yeah. what, what great words. Now I, I already know why I've had so many people reach out and say, <laughs> you've got to get Matt on your show. It's just like uh, you're very in tune with your team and the surroundings and, mm. and that it takes a village. And, and what it sounds like is, you know, this race in Cairns, it, you were really free to play and – and it's amazing. I wasn't even seated, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. You're free to play. Yeah. You know you're coming from rock bottom. Like you said, like I don't, can't imagine how many times you thought about retiring with with this you know, <laughs> with this infection. Surely, how long do you say antibiotics for ten weeks? And yeah, and I just had a pick one in a home and everything. So if anyone wow. for not knowing what that is, it runs into your bicep yeah. straight into your heart, so you can get it the antibiotics quickly, twenty four hours a day. So you're sleeping with a bag on. Um, My goodness. And it was, it was a foot was, infection, right? Like a, a yeah. what, what, like what happened to you? What is that? So it's a bone infection in my right in this fifth metatarsal. From a cut so, or how does it go down? Yeah, way? it would have been initially. Yeah, so it literally just goes. Um, there was a, a cut there on the outside uh, last October, and then you get it, it turns to you get an infection of some degree, some bacteria. It's a skin infection, yeah. And then left too long, it obviously travels and infects other areas of tissue and then bone. But typically, bone infections aren't seen in younger people. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why it stumped the, I guess, the infectious disease team I had at the hospital supporting this whole. I was actually speaking to him today um, because that's it was a big part of that that story, I guess, and his patience with me because I was getting frustrated because it was unraveling as we were going because um, you know I had two surgeries in that period to to clean it and hopefully correct it. And then that third time I went back in, it was either these antibiotics, this concoction works, or you remove that part of the toe, maybe a couple. Oh, the fifth metatarsal said, gets taken completely out. <laughs> maybe the fourth as well. Like, oh, essentially, geez. like they've got to cut away enough where it's not going to be – because when you get bone infection, it could have infected other areas, right? Yeah, of course. Wow. Um, and then my sport, I was like, yeah, let's, I'm, I'm sick of this. Let's just do that. And my sports doctor was like, oh, I don't really know – what the rehab is like. I've never done it with anyone. He's like, it's, it's probably achievable, but it could be two months, it could be six, it could be career-ending. Um, mm, so that's when the infectious disease doc, he just uh, was like, nah, nah, well, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> trust me. And I was like, oh, mate, please. And so then I was on antibiotics for well, a month and uh, of different antibiotics. And then you, I'm getting bloods done all the time and, the strange thing was I was getting doping come to the house <laughs> and I'm on like, you know, they came at one time and I literally just got home from a hospital and got like pick line in and, and I was like, really, guys, like my foot's bandaged up. <laughs> I've got home hospice coming and doping control. <laughs> oh, the life oh, yeah, of a professional like, triathlete. Was I- like were, yeah. <laughs> and I was, so we're having to go through all the medication I'm on and it's just like, you know, because I typically just take nothing for yeah. – it makes it easier when they come. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and now uh, you've got to fill out all I, these forms saying, oh, I'm doing this oh, antibiotic, I'm, I'm doing this thing. Oh, mate. Yeah, checking, is this okay? Is this one? And it's like 
really they're all just killing your system so yeah <laughs> they're okay there's yeah. nothing good about taking loads no. of these how, how has <laughs> your um i mean obviously you've had a great iron man performance and, and we can talk yeah. more about that journey in but in terms of your gut health did you notice anything mm. like trying to come back and rebuild all of that i mean antibiotics you know mm. they kill good and bad so what's yeah. that been like yeah they kill everything so i was just on a I just made sure I was doubling on a probiotic the whole time. Yeah, um, yeah. I actually started all that from last September. I went to the P, uh, the T100 or PTO in Singapore, and I came home from that with COVID and a parasite, and it just like destroyed me, floored me for weeks. Um, and I started when I when I started to get healthy. I just started a probiotic then consistently, and um, my stomach actually was probably better than it had ever been once I started that. So oh, <laughs> you save had, myself, yeah. You've had a bit, mate. Uh, I, yeah, I've I, had a weird 12 months, really Yeah, weird. yeah. It's strange. But, but even yeah, before that, time, trying to understand what's going on with your sacrum and, and all those mm. bits and pieces, you, you've had a journey. <laughs> like you said at the start of the show, life's a journey, but you, you've oh, certainly yeah. had your, we'll call them setbacks, where you've had to learn and grow from. Um, mm. and, and I think that's... they've all led you to this point yeah. where you go to Iron Man cans and you're not ranked, you're, you're number 14, I think, or something. And yeah. <laughs> and then you're just like, okay, I'm just going to let it fly with with no, n- yeah, nothing holding you back. I mean, it's 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 kind of an awesome story. So when, when you finished, when you started your first training back, how many weeks before mm. Ironman Cairns was that that we actually started getting that, going? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was 14 weeks, day one. Mm. Mm. Like, I mean, I see that it's 13 or 14 and that, that like first week was swim only. Mm-hmm. And then the following week was swim bike. And then, so it was really, I had 12 weeks of running, which is not much, right? It's yeah. like, yeah, no. you know, and that's, it literally went 20K, 30K, yep. Yep. 40K, yep. 50K. We got to a hundred for four weeks. Um, but no, the biggest difference was there was no heroics. Yeah. I just... I knew long runs are important. Just really, you know, we stripped it back to like, what is, what is the basis of Ironman racing? And it's being strong and being very aerobically conditioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, for years I've, I've loved the challenge of the big sessions and, Mm -hmm. you know, I love trying to run fast when you're not, haven't been a pure runner and all this sort of stuff. But I guess the, the difference from a training point of view also was because I wasn't running so much, I was able to, use the bike which i love riding bikes to to do the aerobic work as well as swimming like swimming's not something that's ever been my forte but the challenge was just to try and swim around that 30k a week um jeez that's still a lot without thinking it? about it too much yeah <laughs> especially when i was starting to push up seven eight hundred on the bike yeah wow um wow but then, but then the biggest tax was the running even if it was at 30k my foot it was strange my foot had a tolerance so even if I would have felt like I could run longer, my foot would cramp mm. and I couldn't. Mm. And it was literally started at 8K week one when I was like, whoa, I couldn't do much more today. But then every week was like, it was like my foot was telling the story. <laughs> and you were just listening to your body though. I mean, it was like you, I had you to. weren't pushing through. Yeah. yeah. I had no choice. Like I was like, oh, yeah, that feels a bit awkward. Um, and when you literally laid, like I wasn't even on my feet for 10 weeks, like – laid up i'm like oh, I, I can't push this because there was a initially it was like maybe no cans maybe just kona because i'd already qualified in boston mm-hmm. you know because the initial thought was i'm going to do tasmania 70.3 i'm in new zealand missed go to those. texas yeah missed all of that to start, yep. <laughs> yeah, start the pro series and then all of a sudden i'm just going to cans yeah and you know, but for nine t- my ninth trip there, I never really fired a shot. So I was like, oh, great, great place to start. <laughs> mm, yeah, I looked at the results yeah. coming in. I'm like, yeah. yeah, yeah, you hadn't really fired a shot. I love how you put that. Nah. And it's like, I haven't really – you know what's interesting, and I, I don't want to bring it back to me for too long here. I'm going to fast forward mm. to your race. But in 2006, so I would have been 34, I had four months in Australia where I couldn't run, a massive nerve pinch going down my sciatic from my, my, my kind right. of like my lower back and – couldn't fix it in Australia. I went back to Florida, started working with uh, Dr. Alex Keith, my chiropractor, and he got me back running in a month. And then I had about eight weeks to New York triathlon. Mm-hmm. And from that New York race, like you, I, I won it and I hadn't won it before. I had this, it was like I 
came alive. And this is how I feel like it's going to be with you. Okay. I'm not to, uh-huh. <laughs> not to put the, the mickey on you, but it's like, I feel like sometimes you just need to realize what you're truly capable of. And this self belief, mm. this freedom to play. Um, and, and, and my own personal story was like, I went and won something like, it was more like I was winning one in two races for about six years. And that was yeah, really right. just, it was the floodgate though. Like I almost needed that time away to then feel so fortunate and so blessed to be able to race that it became joyful, that it wasn't stressful. It was like I'd already kind of retired in my mind a million times and now I was getting this second opportunity to unleash my potential to the world and that was really cool. And is that kind of how you're feeling like now? It's like, hang on, this is awesome. Now I'm I'm back and I'm the perspective changes a bit, I guess. I exactly how you've just put it uh, <laughs> like I, I i would have had the most time i would have had off in away from training say you know even when i had the bus of sacrum and i had six months off i still swam every day right mm. um ex- obsessively and the most i've had off training would have maybe been a week maybe two mm-hmm. over 15 years so then yeah. you have 10 and i'm like oh i'm done mm-hmm. and then i had a good friend of mine who actually won it a national road champ, um, Michael Freeberg, he's mm. said to me, we went to a local time trial and I've been back on the bike now for seven or eight weeks. It was a state time trial and I won. And he's like, it's not fair anymore. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you had a break, you're going to come back twice as strong. Yeah. And I was like, nah, mate, I like, that's not a break. That's like, it was horrible. Mm. And he's like, yeah, just wait. And I was like on the bike on the weekend, I was like, wow, well, he, he was right. I finally <laughs> felt like I yeah. was doing something I always believed possible. And then when I saw the chopper come up beside me along the cap, the highway there as, as it wraps around the, the cliff faces, I was like, this wouldn't even have been, this would be a crazy dream. But I, I just like, I was living it and I knew my, my son and my wife would have been sitting at the house in Cairns watching and then a good mate of mine, he said to me, one day, please poke your face on the camera, please. <laughs> and I was like, this is the day. <laughs> I had a moment on the bike where I, I felt myself getting overwhelmed with the position I put myself in, given how my legs felt. Mm-hmm. I was pedaling very well. Um, mm-hmm. It wasn't about power. It was about feeling mm-hmm. uh, for the first time and – you know, I put a monster, a mammoth amount of work in towards it to, to get myself back to a what I thought would be okay. Um, and that's where it's exciting now. I'm, I stayed in the sport because of Kona. When I raced there as an age group, I won my age group yep. in 2011 and 2012. And then two years ago, I went to Kona and I didn't finish just with some some health-related issues. And all I want to do is go – go there this year and just perform as well as I can. I just don't. play, mate. You just want to go and play. You just want to go yeah, play just, and show I want to your get work. It and, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, like, I just, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I'm not worried about the winning special, but then when you have a little one and a lot of people would understand this and you get to the finish line, he was just happy to see me. How, how old is your son? Care. How old uh, is two, and half, two and a half. Two and a beautiful half, beautiful age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so he'd be the sort that'd be at home, like, you know, yeah. where's Dada? Yeah. And, Kim, Kim, my wife, would be like, oh, he's on the bike. Oh, yeah, okay. And then he just keep playing. It's not – there's no relevance to what you're trying to achieve. It becomes more personal when you get a bit older. Mm-hmm. It's not – you're not trying to impress the people, you know, up the road or anything like that. It's just you want respect from those that you're racing and, you know, you you just want to be there for the, the people that have, I guess, your family. Yeah. It's like um, – that's so. But awesome. yeah, it was, am- it was an amazing. Uh, well, so amazing. I just want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love. Yeah. Uh, firstly, uh, I skipped over. Um, you, you, you shouted out to Worthy Cam Worth for the people <laughs> that don't know. He's been on the show mm. a couple of times. Uh, actually, about a couple of months ago, we had him on, and great, really a tremendous guy. Um, I'm always. Um, I'm. I, I'm always. I really enjoy seeing some of these guys that you know been around for a long time. They're quite big names. But they're always looking around them and shouting out a kudos to because it's like a it's like a brotherhood to some degree. We all go to 
to war together almost when we <laughs> these battles in modern day battles let's just call it that because it's not war and i don't want to um mm. you know oversimplify. but it is this brotherhood that we go through and and espe- yeah. especially at iron man because it, it is really you versus you for the most part um and so a big shout out to cam worth for that i want to um I want to step through the race a little bit more. You, mm-hmm. you glanced over mm-hmm. a few things there. For everybody listening, um, a 7.45, 7 hours 45, believe that's a, yeah. a record, right? Yeah. For, for Iron Man Cairns. Yeah, five, five minutes, I think. Five yeah. minutes in front of uh, Braden Curry, who was on just, mm-hmm. well, be two weeks ago by the time this episode comes out, but Braden, mm-hmm. uh, we had a great sit-down chat when I was in New Yeah, also another uh, great, lovely guy. Isn't, yeah. he, isn't he just brilliant? Um, yeah. But look, a record performing, uh, uh, firstly, a 50-minute swim, Solid, only mm-hmm. four minutes off the back. Um, and Which f- was a surprise, might I add. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, minute. when you're with such a big group, I was like, oh, we seem to be moving okay. But yeah, yeah anyway, sorry. Yeah, yeah no, no, I want you to talk it through. I'm just going to do <laughs> yeah. your splits first and then you're going to talk okay. me through everything. Um, and then you did a four-hour five bike split, which is mm. insanely fast um, mm. on that course, which blew the record away. And, um, and then a 244, which – for the marathon, I think that matches your personal best from WA last year, about the same, wasn't it? Is that a PB, 244 for the marathon? Yeah, and yeah. then all I get from a few people is if one day when you stop messing around down the finish shoot, you might actually run fast. <laughs> oh, come on. I don't know, <laughs> mate. Anybody, look, a 745 for an yeah. Ironman, you were one of the first Aussies to break eight hours um, a mm-hmm. number of years ago against, uh, I think, Alistair Brownlee, right, in, in yeah, WA yeah. in 2019. Yeah. So you went 755. I mean, these splits... Yeah. Honestly, Luke mm. McKenzie and I were talking and his episode comes out the week before yours. So, and we were talking about how he was mentioning how Pete Jacobs once said he believed athletes will be able to do a 7.30 in the Ironman. This yeah, is right. 10, 15 yeah. years ago. We're like, Pete, you're full of it, mate. You know what you're talking about. But <laughs> now, big shout out to Pete Jacobs. I feel like you're predicting yeah. some of these times that you guys are doing. But anyway, enough of me chatting and rabbiting on and mm. and, and – Take us through, mate, the morning of the mm. race, warm up. Um, you feeling good, <laughs> nervous? How, how was it? Yeah, I'd taken, because I'd, it was the only focus for the start of the year, I took everything with me, like two bikes, ergo, just to set up in Cairns for a few weeks. So I did have a bit of a bike warm up at home, which was nice. Mm. Um, something that I do at home a lot, but you never really have that luxury away when you're just going for short trips. And then, um, yeah, we got down, we drove down to, so for anyone that doesn't know, the, the swim start in T1 is 30K from Cairns. So you got to drive down to the, it's logistically the race is a bit of a challenge, oh, but wow. it works, yeah. Um, drive down and we jagged a fantastic, like this car spot. No one had gone far enough around the front, <laughs> of the waterfront, and we were literally like 100 metres from the swim start. No one around, just. <laughs> Rockstar. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, my coach was with me and then my wife, and he was like, you're joking. <laughs> Anyway, I just, I just felt like, yeah, and you go through it, you, you know what you need to do. Nothing else can be done. And I was like, oh, I just, it's just nice to be here. It was a beautiful morning, which I, you know, I'd never seen the Palm Cove where the swim is look like it. Mm-hmm. So you check in, come back to the car. You know, my wife didn't have, have to carry the pump around, which she was pretty happy about. I could just throw it back in the car. <laughs> and then um, all the little things, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then the swim warm up. Yeah. I felt like, you know, when you've been swimming so much, it just it felt a bit more natural than normal. So um, that was – you can never read into a warm-up too much. That's what you learn over the years. It's you just got to get the blood flowing. And um, and then the swim took off, and you know that you've got Josh Schoenberger, Braden, oh, Greg yeah. Barnaby. These guys swim that front end. Super anywhere, fish, right? so, super fish, yeah. Absolutely. So for me, it was just like try and find a group to be – to use as less, less amount of energy and surf the, surf the feet as best I can. You know, I'd, I'd swum alone many times in Cairns and I knew I can swim okay on my own, but um, you're trying to limit the loss out of the water. Mm-hmm. So I come out with the big group, 12, 13 guys. Um, I knew Braden. I, I didn't know the size of the group up the road, but, you know, there was four, three or four guys up the road. Uh, Nick Thompson was just out the water in front of us. He's another West Australian young guy. He'll be very mm-hmm. – he impresses me every race. His uh, versatility is amazing, but um, – yeah, I, I had no idea what the distance, the gap was to Braden and and, the, and Josh and Greg, and uh, and I think Andrew uh, is it Horschel Turner, the yep, yep. English guy. I he think was he let out. Well. I think he let out of the water. Right. Actually, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he was 
he was, there was four of them up the road. There was then Nick, who was just ahead of us, um, and then a big group. Now, for me, getting out in a big group when you've got Race Ranger and the TOs finally saying that they're going to actually penalise based on the red lights, it's I was in new territory. I'm usually just riding to catch everybody. Um, so I had to make a decision coming out of T2 once I got out, once I fixed my little clothing mishap um, from rushing too much. <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I'll just ride straight past. <laughs> I was like, I'll just stay out of trouble. Mm. It's the best mm. thing. Anyway, I got on the bike and I it was coming to me nicely, but it always does early on. You never, you know, mm-hmm. you live and learn, right? You, you just get, get riding first, get up on the highway. And the group was moving you, along. You, and you I have closed. to be riding like 50, close to 50K an hour. I mean, to, uh, early on there, right? Were you early on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we had a, like, there was a very slight... I guess tailwind. It's a, the typical wind is it's coming from the uh, northeast, south from the south, yeah. and it's blowing up towards Port Douglas. Yeah, right? southeast so it's blowing up the coast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's very nat- normal there. You, you rarely, I, I mean, for two weeks I saw nothing different, but it was just ever so slight this day. Mm. Anyway, so a little bit of a tailie, and the group starts to look around a little bit, and that's when I decided to go from mid group to just go to the front and set the tempo. And um, everybody, I guess there's a lot of the, in the world now, power is so accessible. Mm. For me, it's power is so personal because power meters all read differently. Of course. I knew, I knew I was riding well on the front and I knew the tempo would definitely break up some of the bunch. Mm. Um, but some guys are going to commit because you're not riding at threshold. You're just riding, you know, it's sort of at that borderline of aerobic threshold, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, and yeah, it, it did that slowly. And then we went down, you, you ride down towards Port Douglas and you do a left-hander down this sort of dead-end road just to get a bit of extra time. And that's the first time I saw the lead, the lead four. Um, we had picked up Nick Thompson before that and he was pretty keen to work with me, right? So in Bustledon last year, him and I linked up out of the swim and I actually broke four hours in Bustledon. So yeah. uh, it's the first time an Aussie's gone under four, which is super special at home. I'll, I'll net that's a memory I'll especially cherish forever. Especially on those but. roads, mate. Especially on those roads. I'm sorry. Yeah. And these are flat, not fast roads, easy. people. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. So the country roads, right? Yeah, For yeah. anyone that's been to Australia, they yeah. understand their yeah. country roads are rubbish. Yeah. But yeah. Um, they're made to last long times, not to, not hot mix. <laughs> and uh, So, yeah, then we, we went down this dog leg and I was like, oh, the gap's a minute. Oh, we must have only been a few minutes back. Now, I never knew I two after the race, but like, I closed three minutes in – what was just under 30k wow you know so i was like i didn't know at the time so it was fine i was just like okay let's nick come around me and you know the tempo was okay and i was like oh, i'm gonna go and catch this group now and so i went across and that's the decision that's the time where i'm like uh what what next naturally it's like rest for a bit but mm-hmm. i was like no i'll just go straight past and make sure mm-hmm. Not, not stamp my authority, but just continue at this speed yeah. because – Got a good tempo, just, keep going, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and 12 metres at – if I'm riding a good effort, at a good effort, I know that's a stress for everybody else. So yep. I was like, if I just stretch it out a bit and then you hit the Rex's lookout, which is what a lot of people refer to, but it's the only real climb on the course that goes over a minute mm-hmm. and it's quite steep. And we're going up that on the way back to Palm Cove, so you must be 60, 70K in and – Nick came around me and he said to me, oh, I've got a penalty. And I was like, oh, no, like, he's been handy to uh, share the pacemaking. Yeah. And uh, and then Burkle, Timmy Burkle, come around and he didn't say anything to me, but I was like, well, I haven't seen him. I didn't even know he was there, but I have a feeling he's going to the tent as well. Yeah. <laughs> and sure, sh- sure enough, the two of them pulled in there. And I was like, ah, oh, now I'm just on my own. But there was only five of us left then in this league group. Yeah. And Joshy Amberger. Yeah, come and, and got involved, which was, you know, I was like, it's great when someone's willing to work. And I had a, a good friend of mine, Mike Phillips, yeah. was keen to to put in a bit of work. And then as we turned at, Port, uh, at Palm Cove again and you go back out and do another lap, you hit Rex's again and uh, and Berger and Joshy Amberger attacked out of the saddle. I just made a decision I was going to go much later uh, once the race starts to set in a bit more because it's still early. Um, we're about 100K in. Or even less than probably just yeah ninety five ish, but he attacked at a fair effort, and I just was able to be seated and rode and followed, and I was like, oh, this might get rid of a couple. Um, but over the top, I looked back and I could see that none of the boys go down the hill, and I was like, geez, that is that was a fair effort. Um, 
Anyway, then I went over the top and this is how, how I knew I was having a good day as I, I came past Josh and I said to him, I was like, I like it a lot. <laughs> I like it a lot. Not being, yeah, not being arrogant. I just like, Having a bit of fun. I yeah, was yeah, enjoying yeah. the pain a little mm. bit more than normal. And mm. um, it was a good attack by all means that, you know, I had a look after and it was upwards of 450 watts for, yeah. you know, a minute and a half. So, and he was out of the saddle. And, but I, I think he did himself a disservice. Um, so then we got, I said to him, you know, two's going to be better than one because you can break it up mentally. Yeah. So we go back out to the little dog leg and you see the boys and they're only 30 seconds back. And uh, you come back out into an aid station and the last few aid stations we'd gone through together, Josh had then come around me and sort of sat on the front for us. This one he didn't. And I looked back and the gap was considerable and I was like, oh, I didn't think I dropped him because I'd just been riding consistently, but I felt like he made a tactical choice to go back to that group. Mm, like, and, mm. and I confirmed that with him afterwards. He did think we were just going to burn too many matches yeah, up they're, front. Yeah, they're only 30 seconds back while we're killing yeah, ourselves. They're just going four to guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then so we hit the turnaround and I was like, okay, I've already opened up a bit more. It's 40-odd seconds. I pushed lap on my computer and I was like, I've got 60 Ks. Just ride that speed this power and mm. focus on my headings and i you don't know right so for anyone watching the footage i had no idea for 60k to go what the gap was going to be in t2 wow for all i knew that no just, signs or no boat no, motorbikes nobody's nothing. telling you anything nothing right <laughs> and i was like just, don't look back just, don't look back <laughs> no nah, i didn't i didn't once look back i just yeah. trusted in i saw the helicopter in the distance coming back through the cane fields yeah and i was like that could be them or that could just be the chopper getting some footage of everyone else um and I was like, oh, I, I feel like I'm, you know, I wanted to ride 45k an hour back from Palm Cove because then I knew that's typically when that race breaks up a lot. Mm. Even with it, it was only a slight headwind, but I was pedaling 95 plus. Like I'm, I was very happy how I felt on the bike. I was enjoying the moment. Gee, that's a high cadence. Um, man. You, 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 you hung yeah, I, I did. I averaged, I averaged about that for the day, which wow. I knew. So wow. when you're pedaling a 60 tooth chain ring. At that, you, you're obviously pushing good power. Yeah, seriously. Um, and how big are you? How, like so in was, terms of power, you're you, you, uh, like seventy-eight. 70, yeah, seventy-eight. Yeah, seventy-eight yeah, yeah. kilo. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's yeah. I was, you know, the I've worked a lot on my position and my, I guess, my body mechanics over the years, as everyone does. Yeah. And you all look fantastic, I knew I was honestly. Good, Com- compared to what we look like yeah, seventeen years ago, fifteen years, <laughs> you guys all look amazing. <laughs> you have to now, right? I <laughs> know. Seriously, go on. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, that's all right. And then I, uh, I sit, uh, as I come back into town, um, all I really wanted to see was my son Tom and my wife because <laughs> you just, you know, you, you haven't really seen them all day. And then I saw my coach as he come 3K to go on the bike and he just said to me, he was like, you got a big lead. Now, I don't know what that means. Yeah, yeah. A <laughs> so, minute, a minute, and I don't 30 sure minutes. He, a minute, is that big? <laughs> we, we'd spoken a few, very, few scenarios, but I was yeah. just – Okay, thank you. Yep, and then I pushed on, and and then I heard it was upwards of five minutes in T two, and I straight away I was like, oh, well, I can relax. I was like, let if anybody leading a race freaks out, they just need to take check because everyone behind you has to run faster to catch you. It's all math, right? Now. So they it's have all math. To, they can't. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly right. They yeah. can't put a foot wrong. Yeah. Whereas you can afford to do your own thing, and five minutes plus. All I like, I've done a few handicap sessions with some training partners. And if you give someone, if you say, okay, I'll leave in two minutes and see when I catch you, it feels like you stand there for half a day <laughs> whilst that two minutes goes by. <laughs> so I straight away I was in transition. I was like, oh, well, just, just jog into this for five minutes and then get running. Um, now, the funny story is I've run out of transition and I knew my wife and my son and my mother-in-law were going to be at the lagoon. So you run past the little lagoon in Cairns a few times each lap, mm. which is, you know, it's a beautiful place for people to hang out. And uh, I run out and I run past it the first time. No, don't, didn't see them anywhere. Aww. They're the only ones I'm sort of <laughs> watching for, right? And then, and then you run along the broad walk and you come back. So you're about 3K in. And I was like, they'll be there then. Yeah. No, I didn't see them. Aww. And then my wife says to me afterwards, the race, she's like, I was like, where were you on the first lap? And she's like, oh, so Tom was in the lagoon. And is she, she was like, oh, quick, dad's coming. We'll go see him. And he just turned to her and said, no. And <laughs> I don't care she what did, dad's doing. She didn't have babies. 
<laughs> she didn't have her bathers on, so he started to walk further into the lagoon so she couldn't get him. <laughs> oh, no way. There's a slight of perspective on what just, really matters. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I want to swim. Yeah. Right. Oh. And, then, uh, and so they eventually they got out and I saw them the next few, few laps. But it does become about a math equation. So mm. you know mm-hmm. when you're the front runner, yep. and I enjoy that, being the hunted, I guess, um, you can just – you got to trust in your training then because it's like if I'm running 350 pace, in order to catch me, someone running three, you know, 340, 335, they'll pull back time considerably. But when I saw the gap was only a minute less, you know, just over a minute in the first lap, I was like, oh, it's not running much faster. Mm. And I was like, I've probably got three more gears still if need be. That was the check, you know, the discussions mm. with coach and whatnot with the coach pre-race was just make sure you're within yourself because running's been the challenge, right, yeah. for the training. Then the second lap went through and I was like, oh, okay, now the gap's sort of halfway. It's two and a half to three minutes. But I was going through special needs, stopping, grabbing my bottle. So I was losing probably 10 to 15 seconds in momentum there each lap anyway. Mm-hmm. And I was like, so, you know, and taking it easy through the aid stations. I never really stressed through them. I just wanted to make sure I got nutrition right and, and, and stayed cool as the sun was out. Um, and I always thought that's what had hurt me in the years past in Cairns mm. was the dehydration. Um, and then lap three, so Brady and I had a few words to, to one another on lap one and two. He sort of came out of transition. I'm coming, Berto. He said that. He said that. He said that, oh, to, right. me. He said that to me as we ran by. Right. We've got a good relationship. Of course, he of course he's, a, he's a cheeky bugger, isn't he? I love it. And then, and then I thought the second lap, I could see he was running fast. Like Braden's yeah. really throws the body around and yeah. goes after yeah. it. And the second time on the broad walk, I was like, "Where are you?" You know, he was closing the gap. So I was like, "Oh, look, a podium here would be amazing." Regardless, right? Mm. I've been leading for ages, and it's been it's been great to be on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I got my face but on the camera. The, there you go, everybody. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but then the third lap, I was like, "Whoa!" Oh, I could see his body language had changed a little bit, mm. and I still feel the same. And I was like, twenty three k. You go past through the turnaround uh, off the broad walk area, and uh, I was like, "Oh, the gap's not shifted much." And then by the top, by the twenty twenty seven k mark. And you're coming back around from the airport uh, on the third lap. I actually was like, I'm going to win. Is that like, right? Around that, 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 that 15 k to go, 15 k yeah. to go. You haven't yeah. had a full running program, but you still nah. felt that in you in yourself. That's so cool. Yeah, just the cadence. Yeah. I was like, I'm I'm not phased by, you know, I'm, I'm a station to a station still, and get what you need, and then get running. And I I just felt like I had a, a very lovely flow going you know people mm. look for that runner's high i was mm. enjoying the the running and how it was feeling of course it hurts but it wasn't i wasn't tightening any more than i already was mm-hmm. um you know through post chain so i got onto the last lap and 8k to go the gap had opened a little bit and i was like i don't need to do anything different here i just need to <laughs> run out to the airport and run back and i you know been out there training for a little bit so i knew what mm-hmm. how every bit ran and at that final turnaround, 3K to go, in 2014, I raced there. And I was third on the last lap. I, it was uh, Cam Brown won that year. Burkle was second. And Pete Robinson was running with them for a while. And then he he popped and I passed him. And then on 3K to go, I went around that turnaround. And he came past me like a steam train. He just found, as as Robbo always managed to do, this amazing kick yep. for four k and Head ran back past away me he goes. <laughs> and took it took it from me to from a podium, which would have been my first podium in mm. an Ironman mm. at you know early to early early years. And I went around that final turnaround, and I was <laughs> to Robbo, not that he was there or that he was listening. And I was like, not today, Mister Robinson. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know the stuff you yeah. say to yourself yeah. when you're starting to you know, low on sugar, but I was. I ran back through the A station and I was like, just don't celebrate too early. Everyone's seen what happens in Iron Man. Yeah, but the crowd but started to feel it, still. right? I mean, you got the lead bike, the oh, energy absolutely. starts changing on the cheers yeah. on the sideline. Suddenly it's just like. I had a good friend too mm. who'd flown over. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, there. go. Yeah. He'd flown over to uh, just to watch. He, he was racing for years and the first few laps he was like, yeah, you look relaxed. You look good, mate. And then he, he was the one that was like, Braden. Braden's cracked, mate. And I was like, you hear that? But you know, I probably trusted his instinct a little bit. And then the last lap, I could feel his nervous energy because he knew what was about to happen. Mm. 
Mm. He didn't say anything to me. It was just this look of disbelief, like, you've cracked it, mate. You've finally, like, yeah. <laughs> had the day you should have, right? For You've done it in Busso a few times and you've been good there, but doing it away from home is when you start to establish yourself as an athlete. Mm-hmm. And coming back, I saw a friend uh, about a kilometre to go and I just said, like, you can't see anybody. He was like, oh, no, enjoy the day, mate. And that's when you run back through cans there and you hit all the restaurants and the cafes and it's chockers. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. And I just embraced it and I obviously feel that energy and give it back and you don't feel the last K. I nice? felt oh, I actually watched that bit of footage back and I, I look like I run about 30 seconds faster a K, just, yeah. just a general turnover. And yeah, that's still, I had to wake up the next morning and, and rewatch the footage because... <laughs> I, like it was didn't 4 a.m. It. And it was a, was it a dream. Mate, I honestly like, <laughs> as stupid as it sounds. I love it. I it was I'd woken from a terrible sleep as everyone experiences post oh, Man, and I'm sitting there watching this live coverage, and <laughs> like I start laughing because I was like, that's just insane, you know. Like, yeah, I'm 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 just a bloke from the hills in Swanview, like the hills in Perth that. I really like I, my first Ironman. I swam an hour ten. Mm. As an age grouper, like I went ten hours, you know, nine hours forty five, or whatever it was in my first one. So, you know, winning at home was super special. My son was born the week I first I won in WA in twenty one. No way. Um, so they weren't there to like my yeah. wife was at home with him, and so having them there and you know making it a family trip. That's where. That's all that. You know, mm. that will be a memory for us for a long time. But I just see it as you, it's mm. such a breakout performance um, mm. in, in, in front of a quality, you know, field um, of outstanding athletes and in that top 10, mm. you know, it's a, it's a quality championship field. I mean, this is not a cherry pick by any means. And No, no, no. That was the know. risk of going there after yeah. having yeah. such a hiatus. You know? Yeah, yeah. But 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 what I what I love by your story, which thank you for sharing. I I love the pictures that you create, and I think everybody listening, we're all. If you're on a wind trainer right now or running, I'm sure they <laughs> I'm sure they're generating more power and running faster than they probably should because it, it is inspiring stuff, and we can see it. But what I love about what you were saying is just the the way you were talking to yourself, and and you know I, I'm a mm. I'm a huge believer in in. Uh, what you think has a direct impact on your physiology and when you can be doing it under duress, stress, yep. you know, yep. like these aren't, they, it hurts. <laughs> like you said, it's still, it still hurts. But what you were talking, what you were saying to yourself along the way and how your body would have been just feeding off that as it went, it's just like, uh, you know, you have this podcast now and and I think it's going to be one of those things that you, you really listen to or you write your own notes down as you get ready for other big events that you've got coming up, you know, this year and mm. for the next few years and, and remind yourself of the way you spoke to yourself. I think it's just, it's really cool, mate. I, I, I took so much out of what you just said. So thanks for sharing it. Very cool. No, it's, yeah, it's a pleasure. It's like, it, it's been a, like I said, a, it was a special day for us and then it's been a cool week and, yeah. you know, just got to pull my jets for you know <laughs> another week and then uh, shoot towards Kona because, that's the, that's a different belief I have now. Yeah, and look, look, I yeah. think you've got a lot to take with you from this one, which is which is just fantastic. Mm. Um, I never really got to uh, you know you started you said you you started um, the sport as mm. doing it age group, <laughs> and you, you you mentioned early on you know playing AFL for <laughs> and cricket. Um, yeah. w- were you a sports mad family? Was it? I mean, you got dragged uh, yeah, into triathlon. I guess. My mum and dad just my, – my dad's from the country. Um, so he was all – yeah, cricket was life, right? Like I just <laughs> – we lived and breathed it growing up. And, you know, footy was just great because you – it's it's kind of what you did as a, a young guy at school. You, you had a group of mates and you, you'd play footy for, I guess, for general health and fitness. And, um, yeah, it wasn't until I left school that I just found this uh, passion for fitness. Mm. Uh, I just really enjoyed – I guess initially it was about like oh, I'd, I'd like to just be a bit stronger in the sports that I'm playing socially, and then yeah, I just I got obsessed with the gym really, um, mm. and it gets to a point in the gym it's like oh well, you're lifting big weights, but what do you do? Go and 
be a bodybuilder. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, as this, this is where the story like takes the weird turn. I had a friend for my 21st birthday jokingly buy me an entry to a novice distance triathlon. And I was, the day that it came around, it was Australia Day in 2009 from memory. That was the year. Yeah, I was just 21, like six days before it. And, uh, and we went along to to this race and she had her dad's bike that I, I borrowed and he was like oh, probably two foot shorter than me. Um, <laughs> it was a 200 meter swim, 7K ride and a 2K run. And I just remember doing that and coming out and of the water running up the transition, being like, oh, this is fitness. This is a test, mm-hmm. you know. And then <laughs> I had a friend just happened to do the same race for some reason, a guy from school. And we were at that age where you're indestructible, but out of that race, he's like, oh, we should do that half Ironman in, in May. In the bus <laughs> You've was. gone from a 15-minute race to <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, five hours. I think it was 14, Greg. Okay, 14-minute race to five hours. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, we'll so typical. It, you know? <laughs> we were trained together and, you know, I was 20. We were 21, so yeah, we just got yeah, into it. And yeah, yeah. That's when magazines were big. Yeah. Newton just hit the scene. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Crowley and Macca are winning Kona Ironman. Pretty much, they are at one and another. Pete Jacobs yeah. wins in 2012, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I did an Ironman later that year mm. as well. I got a coach for that. And then, um, then the, it, like, so that was the end of 2009, and then I qualified in the Port Macquarie. It was in the following March. So I finished second in my age group in that first one. Didn't know nothing about Hawaii. Like, literally, wow. that's how fresh, yeah. how raw we were from a family point of view as well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I thought I'll, I'll just qualify in Port Macquarie <laughs> and I did and then went to Kona and that was the biggest eye opener of, oh, that's, uh, that's an experience I won't forget in terms of that's when it was a mass start mm. and just the oh, anxious energy and it was something else. The cannon and on the when, pier and everybody's oh, treading water and the helicopters are above. Just, yeah. <laughs> people grabbing one another to stay afloat and... <laughs> You know, I suffered through that day because you just go for 10 days early from a winter and it never works. But, yeah, yeah, I just – I was like, I want to go back and do that properly. And then the obsession began, uh, you know, started. And I I then won my age group the following two years and then took a pro license. And it's not all fruity on the other side. (laughs) No, it's not all. But that's the coolest thing, mate. Uh, Your story and your journey – they make up who you are, and, mm-hmm. and uh, that's what. Look, we're 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 fifty two minutes into a recording, and it's just travelled yeah, by sorry. because no, no, because <laughs> the story's just so awesome. And um, actually, your story is a bit like uh, Lucy Charles Barkley. Um, I don't know yeah, if you right. know Lucy or you're friends with those guys. They're tremendous people. I love those guys. And yeah. um, you know, she she didn't know anything about the sport, and she'd done swimming, and then she went and did a you know, did this Ironman. Went to as an age grouper to Kona, one Kona as an age grouper, and then came back. You know, it's like this. Uh, I love it. I love the way we yeah. all have different journeys into the sport, and and yours. You know, I've done kind a lot of people these. you meet, and yeah, like uh, oh. you know, that's where my the close knit of friends is. <clears throat> it's just weird the way you the, the difference in life you the life the, the path that you can take based on something you pursue mm-hmm. is um yeah, it shapes who you are. Right, it's not it's not that you owe something to the sport you've just embraced it mm. um where it's like i <laughs> now i live in a dream that has really become the reality which is super now it's enjoyable but you know there's there's a lot of times which weren't 100 so percent. <laughs> you got to smile at those now right <laughs> oh and look it's it's like uh you know that that final when you finally get that moment you're like mm. oh Winning is everything. I mean, it really is awesome <laughs> when you get to finally get it. Like, I've had a lot of young athletes talk to me over the years, and Greg, what's one bit of advice you could give me? Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, unless your name's Javier Gomez or Alistair Brownlee, mm-hmm. you're going to lose a lot. You are going yeah. to lose far, far, far more than you ever win. But the beautiful thing yeah. about that is, boy, does it make those wins special when they come around, <laughs> you know? And that's it takes years story. to realize that, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. for me, you know, I've watched the, the footage and Welshy keeps saying, you know, this 36-year-old, I still feel 20. That's the important thing to remember. But yeah, yeah. when when you're in it early on, you think you're going to rock and win it one out of two. <laughs> but then you hit a point where you're like, 
always the big the, the advice I would give to any young person in any facet of life is when you have success, enjoy it for a period afterwards. Yes, because it doesn't happen often. Mm-hmm. You know, so the big moments they're not every day. So it's like for the first time we've come home and you know my coach is like, all right, so. This is what about we do this now and this now and I was like, oh, can we just have this discussion next weekend? Well done, mate. That's and awesome. And he was like, yeah. Well, what do you mean? And I was like, I want to enjoy it. I owe, yeah, the people close that you know. My, for instance, when we're long run, I'm long running. I run this trail loop and there's no aid, no water, the whole time. So I get my wife to meet me at different intersections on a Thursday. You know, it's a Thursday morning early. Puts my son in the back. He's having his his breakfast in the back seat. Um, in his baby seat and they just meet me at intersections along the way and I just have a Gatorade or, you know, some gels, some more gels or whatever we're doing. And, um, yeah, people don't see that. They're in their jammies and pulling up at weird places in the trail just so I'm able to, you know, not bury myself in these runs or, um, that's you know, so that's what I want to go and enjoy with those people close that were a big part of it. Like I, I don't think that's – there's so many bits to the puzzle, but it's so important now to, yeah, that, to that, that story back. alone has me just, oh, I love it, mate. I love mm. it. Now, you've got a fan in me for life. I, I just think that's <laughs> really cool. Your family, big shout out to your wife and, and your young son. She's not a fan of it all the time. No, me. I bet. But it's still, it's like, it's like painting that picture of what it takes. You know, mm. that it is a, it's, it's fairly selfish to some degree, you know, and, and, and oh, when absolutely. you do have success, um, you know, I've had athletes on the show that say, and I'll say, you know, what's some of your regrets? And they're like, oh, yeah, I, I won a world title and I was straight on to the next thing and I never celebrated mm. because it was always yeah. more, 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 more. And it's an mm. athlete mentality, right? You're never, never satisfied. But to stop and pause and go, no, that's what I've been chasing and I just got yeah. it. Yeah. Let it sit for a second and enjoy it with the people around you. Um, and, and honestly, sometimes when you, my wife, Laura, and I would always say, you know, if you have these big moments, we would actually pull out of races, even though we knew we were in great mm. shape, we were doing more of the Olympic yeah. distance, so we'd back up races a bit more. But if we had big, you know, world title, high V type wins, we'd go, no, yeah. clear the calendar. Nope. Because we want to enjoy it for one, but also on these emotional highs, boy, there's some, they can be quite low. For a little while, yeah. like to, for the body to get back to equilibrium, to get back to neutral, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, so don't yeah, force yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> mm. Yeah, um, that's what you learn. You, it takes a while to learn that. If you, you, you can't force something, you just need to feel it, right? Yeah. It's no. like, let it come back to you and then that's when you're ready to, you know, the, the, naturally the first thing I got from most, I guess, media after was, oh, does this, do you chase the pro series now? Do you change your approach? But no, we're not. Like, I'm just... Mm-hmm. I'm going to Townsville to do the long course worlds. Yep. I'm going out to the, to the Ironman world champs and it's like, why not be two time world champ? <laughs> I, I, I love it. I love it. What, 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 day, what, day, what day is long course worlds in Townsville? Uh, is it the 25th of August? Yeah. It's okay. the last weekend of August. Yeah. Oh, the timing works well for you to have sort of a couple of pushes, you know, like they're not yeah. too back to back and you can build on the fitness and, and you know, the travel well up to Northern Queensland now. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know. Yeah, all um, these tropical races this year. I need to probably move to Queensland, but. What, what's the distance um, of long course worlds for people listening? So they have that standalone distance of 3K swim, 110 mm-hmm. on the bike and then 30K run. It's a good distance. I like that distance. Yeah, yeah. different. It's just it'll just be enjoyable because it's different. Yeah, like yeah. you you can pace it very differently. Um, like 110 isn't isn't 90, isn't 80. You, you still need to settle in. A little bit, but yeah. it's still at a quite you know slightly higher sort of limit. And yeah, I don't know. It'll be new. It'll Mate, be it's uh, awesome. Hmm. Look, before I let you go, um, mm-hmm. and I know you've done a lot of these this week, and you've been. You know, I really appreciate you. This is the most enjoyable one, Greg. Well, mate, mate, you've responded so <laughs> quick to me when I reached out and, yeah. and you know, it's, I'm a huge fan of the sport and I love these kind of stories more than anything, you know. I so, was worried, though, after beating you in 2014. <laughs> you, might speak to me. you see how I just glanced over that early? We just didn't even talk about it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was, uh, no, I mean, uh, that was when we, we did meet in the Philippines. There and, yeah. Gosh, 10 years ago now. Isn't that uh, amazing? Yeah. <laughs> Before I let you go, though, I, would, I do want to finish mm. with. Um, I ask all my guests these final four questions, and uh, you kind of you kind of answered this one already just a moment ago, but uh, I'll ask it again anyway. Um, if you could give your your, your eighteen year old self some mm-hmm. advice, um, what would it be? 
hang in there. <laughs> well, you took that literally, didn't you? Um, you yeah. are in the, at the start of every show. I, I always start with my my fa- my number one mantra is you know success comes to those who endure just one yeah. moment longer. <laughs> and, and boy, are you that um, you are yeah. living that mantra. It's so Hang cool. In there. Hang yeah. in there, buddy. Um, yeah. All right, next one. <laughs> if you could have dinner with mm. three people, any three people, <laughs> living or dead, ideally living, but you can be dead. Um, non-family, I'd prefer. Um, who would it be? Oh, I'm not a big dinner man, but I'll, if it was three people. Coffee, uh, beer, whatever yeah, coffee, social maybe, outing. Maybe breakfast, breakfast maybe. <laughs> breakfast, I, breakfast, buffet. I, I was always, I mean, growing up, Shane Warne was a, oh. that's what I wanted to bowl leg spin for Australia. Mm. That was the, you know, like a lot of kids' dreams that, yeah. in the yeah. early years. It's, um, yeah, he, I don't know, I would have some cool questions there. Some Me, of the, miss you, Warnie. He lived large, mm. that boy, didn't he? He didn't Yeah, he massively, big, right, yeah. yeah. Uh, but also, you watch some stuff, and there was there's plenty of challenges for him too, right? When you're in and out of size and stuff, that's yeah, yeah. You know, I was cricket, we were cricket obsessed, so that was always cool to watch. Um, so yeah, probably warning. Probably I don't need to talk about poker, but um, yeah, the cricket days. But I, I obviously take a, a bit of a liking to, I guess, business approaches and Dietrich, the the co the founder or co founder of uh, Red Bull. Mm. Um, yes. I don't know. I just feel like Red Bull is a company. So cool. You know, the, the initial story is so cool, but the way they, they take things on, which have been un, untapped and unmarked, like I'm not looking for a sponsorship from Red Bull, but their marketing and their approach to, to business to sell an energy drink is, it'd just be a cool, I'd have so many questions That's around so that. That's so cool, mate. I, you know what's crazy mm-hmm. is, the last year or so, I've spent a lot of time doing a lot of homework on Red Bull for different businesses I'm involved in. And what I love yeah. about them is they never took on Pepsi or Coke. They never regarded them themselves nah. as a soda drink. They created a whole new market and called it energy drinks. And they were the only one. And Yeah. Do you know the story of why it all came about? Give me it. So he's an Austrian fella, mm-hmm. Dietrich. I can't even speak. I don't want to mess his last name up, but he was traveling to Thailand for business and right. they had an energy, a drink there where he was drinking it and it was helping him with his jet lag. Mm. And so he obviously then explored what this was and spoke to the businessman over there and they rebranded, um, created global sort of business around it. And yeah, it was purely as it is. <laughs> I think I think that, I think he owned the the guy in Thailand owned they both had fifty percent each but yeah they one percent yep. went to his yes the guy in Thailand's son and what was interesting when he took it back to Austria he added a little bit of fizz he said the Europeans yeah. need a little bit of fizz and it didn't yeah very cool isn't it I, like you and I yeah. can geek out on this mate I I, I love all yeah, this yeah, stuff yeah. too uh, yeah. and then obviously he's employed a fantastic <laughs> marketing team yes, and yes they've taken a lot of chances so it's yeah. you know but that yeah that'd be cool and then. As, as strange as this is, and I don't know how this would go at dinner, but Usain Bolt, um, someone that stays at the top of that yeah. that sprinting world yeah. um, for three Olympias, I, I was just I, I'm a real fan of sprinting because it's so fast, it's over so quickly, but there's so many different dynamics to performance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, like we we endure eight hours, you know. That's of course there's a lot, but when it's only nine seconds, ten seconds, yeah. and yet the same science goes into it, it's you know, the self doubt in that sport it'd be it'd be a whole other level. It's amazing, yeah. isn't it? It's like this. Um, mm. you, you, it's almost like you, your left hand could be slightly off, and you, that's yeah. just doing a win and a fifth. It's like there's no and time people to wanted up. him to fail. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. people were waiting for him to fail at that Olympic level, and then just three times. Yeah, showed up at the right day. You know? What a great dinner, mate. Warning. <laughs> Weird. Warning. Yeah. I know. I love it. It's, this is why I ask the question. It always makes me go, yeah, that's cool. I love it. Um, all right. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? I mean, you, you're 35, 36, you just yeah. said, and, um, you know, you've had a big, big win. I'm a big believer in the golden <laughs> 30s, by the way. My, my, I actually think mm-hmm. my best years were from about 31 to 39. So I, I, I still, or maybe even 40. So I still think you've got plenty of time to do some great things here. But where, where do you see yourself in five years? I've got a close friend uh, who writes with J.K. Lula, uh, Luke Durbridge, mm. and we every year we come home, we've kind of lost our training partners over the years. You know, the boys just either retired from cycling or, and we're both hanging in there still. 
and <laughs> I would just like to outlive him in that <laughs> way. In that way, like obviously they've they've paid quite well, so he was always going to yeah. beat me to it if I couldn't sustain it financially. But I messaged him and I was like, "Well, at least we've got another summer now." So for me, just if I'm still doing, I just love the training. I love the long days and you know seeing what's possible. Yeah. That's where I still hope to be in five years. You know, I'll only be forty-one, and then much. Yep. My wife's not listening yet, so <laughs> she's um, in the other room with Tom. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going for another yeah. ten. What? I'll probably be going to kid sport though, so that'll be cool too. Yeah, yeah, for sure, <laughs> buddy. Um, all right, la- last one on this four. Uh, you know, this is not meant to be morbid, but if you only had six months to live, how would you spend mm. it? Well, I'd firstly like to win. A world title, and then I'd just spend the rest of the time with Kona, with uh, my family. Sorry, yeah, with Kona, <laughs> yeah, with Kona so in Kona. Maybe I'll be we'll in Kona be. with my world title. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe, yeah. yeah. No, Spend look, I think time, that, yeah. that that question for you, you you've mm-hmm. already illustrated through the, you know this past hour how important family mm-hmm. and close friends and your team are to you. And I, I just mm-hmm. you know it's a, a wasted question because I already know how you'd spend them. <laughs> um, let's finish up with some rapid fire. Let's see if you've got any fast twitch mm-hmm. fibers left. Right. <laughs> Greatest movie of all time? Oh, well, um, I like Coach Carter. I think it's a really good film. Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah I love it. Yeah. Uh, and, and you'll hang up here and you go, oh, I should have said this one, but don't worry about it. I okay. probably should have done that. Yeah. <laughs> First car you ever owned? Lancer, Mitsubishi Lancer. <laughs> oh, yeah, very cool. <laughs> uh, takes me back. All right, two, yeah. two most used apps on your phone? Oh, uh, Instagram and Dropbox. Dropbox, really? Yeah, Classic. I don't know. Just I seem to be on it all the time. People sending them files for stuff. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's awesome. strange. Yeah. Uh, biggest pet peeve? Eating with your mouth open. <laughs> Eating with your mouth full. Sorry. Eating. Uh, talking with, talking your, mouth with full. your mouth full. Talking with your mouth full. Oh, Let's get that a, right. Rick. That's Jeez. a good one. Well done. I can't stand it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My dad's listening. That noise. Oh, it. <laughs> you got, yeah, yeah, you know who you are. <laughs> All right. What decade of the music is the best? What decade of music is best? Yeah. Oh, 90s. Oh, when bad. are we, when are we Tupac and yeah, I'm, I'm a bit more R&B. Yeah. All right. Early uh, 2090s. Yeah. What, what book would you give to a friend? Oh, wow. I don't know. You book reader? What? I'm more of an audible guy, but mm. I listen to books. Not really, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's all right. You don't. We can no, pass sorry. on these. Yeah, yeah. It'll come back yeah, to you when you let me, any let of me my know. my friends would read them. <laughs> 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 pass. All right. Are you a morning or night person? No, I'm morning. Yeah. yeah. Coffee or tea? Yeah. Coffee. Nice. Dream vacation spot. Oh, no, I just love home. Oh. <laughs> Fa- favorite, Sorry. <laughs> favorite Netflix or recommended Netflix or streaming? Is there one that you recommend? <clears throat> um, I honestly don't watch too much. We just watch a lot of Paw Patrol. <laughs> yes. Doesn't it change? <laughs> too much. Everybody's uh-huh. like, Greg, you should watch this. You should watch this. I'm like, well, I can tell you the latest. The Tour de France docos are cool. Yeah, That's they, are cool. they are cool. They are cool. I've got I've got Beckham on my list. I want to watch Beckham and I haven't had a chance to watch oh, that. Yeah. Everybody raves about it, so yeah. it's really cool. Um, yeah. But mate, this has been really, really fantastic for just to connect and chat, and <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm incredibly excited about your future. But for now, mm-hmm. just enjoy um, what you've achieved. The world did. We all stood up and went, "Wow, that was an outstanding performance um, and a really breakthrough performance." So massive congrats again, and and thanks for coming on and just sharing your story, mate. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. And look, I, I guess I don't want to take anything away from all the other guys that were racing. It's the unfortunate thing in sport is there's only one winner mm. most of the time. Um, but, you know, we had seven or eight guys go under eight hours on a course where uh, someone's really only done that, you know, once one guy's done that per year for the last couple mm-hmm. or two maybe. But So it's it's amazing to see where the level's going and, you know, the technology's played a big part, but also people's just – are getting smarter and applying themselves more. It's it's great for the sport in Australia, and then obviously globally, it's been um, the depth's amazing now, male and female. 
Yeah. Well, mate, so it's, yeah. it's great to see another Aussie really step up. Mm. And, you know, I love my Kiwis too. But, you know, when we're on the global oh, stage, I, I love my Kiwis. But when they're at home, <laughs> no. Nah. Sorry, Brayden. Ah, come no. on, Greg. I'll nah. cheer for you when you're in Kona, mate. But, no, <clears throat> you know, it's great to see they another Aussie. They steal our titles buddy. all the time. Yeah. They steal our titles all the time. They do. They steal our titles. <laughs> they just know the cricket. That's all. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a huge fan, buddy. Uh, I'm looking forward Thanks. to watching you in, in, in Kona and, and Townsville this year and, um, you know, in the, in the next few years. Um, and I know you've got a lot of supporters after listening to this episode too. Um, so once again, mate, thanks again for coming on. Uh, for everybody listening, you can find all the show notes, timestamps and everything else at bennettendurance.com forward slash media. All right, stay on the line, buddy. Cheers. Thank you. Welcome to the Greg Bennett Show. I'm your host, Greg Bennett. And this was, wow, it was a really special episode. I thoroughly enjoyed getting to know Matt Burton better. We actually did race way back in 2014, and he'll remind you of that because he did beat me in a race in the Philippines. But this was just a really great story of a man that stuck at the sport. He stuck at it, stuck at it, stuck at it, and uh, got an amazing breakthrough win at uh the Asia Pacific Ironman Championships in Cairns and just his storytelling. I think you'll really enjoy this one. He, he added another story that I'll give you right now as, as we hang up. And he just said, look, it's been such a, it's been such a family journey for him. And you, you'll get that from the show. But he said, even my mother-in-law got her moped license and uh, motor paced me for five years. Um, I don't know about you, but... That, that just blows me away that his mother-in-law was motor pacing him on a 100cc moped. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to add that little bit of a story up front here, but there's so many great stories in this episode. Just a really great story of hanging in there, perseverance, resilience. Um, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. And remember, success comes to those who endure just one moment longer. <laughs> 